everyone, I'm Andrea and this is Kurfi and in today's video I want to talk about five mistakes that we made with our new puppy and how you can avoid them and I think this is really common for new owners to make mistakes, it's completely natural but the best thing to do is to learn from them and do better next time because no one expects us to be perfect and we can't be perfect so we need to be okay with that and just be better. And I'm going to start with something that happened on the way home. So obviously, Gulfi here is a chow chow and chow chows have a double coat. Uh, a double coat means they can get really warm really quickly. And uh, we didn't take enough precautions for that, I think. So we had about a four hour drive home, which means that he was going to be in the car for a really long time. And we had him sit on my partner while I was driving and my partner had like a blanket on his lap and then Gulfi on top. What we found was two things. In the first 15 to 20 minutes, he was understandably really nervous. So he started drooling a bit and he was panting and he just wasn't happy. And yeah, there's two things that we could have done better there. Number one is that our AC was on 21 degrees, which I thought was okay. But for him, it must have been too hot because about 15 minutes in, we put it down to 19 degrees and he got visibly better. And then he would have been completely fine sat on the floor in between my partner's legs on a blanket. He didn't have to be on his lap because probably the heat from my partner from the human body was also warming him up and that wasn't making him that happy. So we did actually change the setup and the AC eventually, but we maybe could have started with that at the beginning. The next thing is that chows have this like chin hair, kind of a beard, which means when they drink water, they're naturally like basically dripping and you have to wipe it every time. So I got him this road refresher bowl which actually works really well now, but at the beginning I used to put way too much water in it and there's this vessel in there that kind of floats to the top. So the way they drink is they put pressure on the vessel with their tongue and that brings the water up so they don't like dip their entire face in the water. Uh, so I started putting too much water in there when in reality you need like one cup or two cups maybe and that's more than enough. So even though we were using the right bowl, he was still super dripping and I'm going to insert a little clip here of what he looked like when he first drank from the bowl. But it's gotten a lot better since. The next two mistakes are actually about potty training. And there's many mistakes we have done and owners in general do with potty training. And it's one of the most difficult things I think that we've done so far. But I highlighted the two biggest ones that I think can make the biggest difference in your potty training as well. The first one is that in the first couple weeks of him being home with us, we confined him into a single room, which is something that's often recommended because that gives you more control over the puppy. They can't roam around as much, destroy things, do something you don't want them to. So whenever he needed the toilet or we felt like he needed the toilet, we would pick him up, carry him outside to where, he wanted, where we wanted him to go and then brought him back in. And that was fine. And he was making a lot of progress and he was going to the toilet less and less in the house. However, in this method, we didn't let him know how to tell us that he needs to go to the toilet. So it completely relied on us always knowing when the right time was and always carrying him because he was in that single room. So that eventually we opened the door such that he could also access the hallway where our main door is so that he would understand when we go out we go out through the front door and we actually started taking him out through the front door and then carrying him down the stairs until he could figure out the stairs by himself so that he understood the transition from inside to outside. And I'm going to make a whole video about uh, potty training as well. But basically, eventually, I also introduced bells that are hanging on our front door so he can paw the bells or ring the bells when he needs to go to the toilet. Another potty training mistake that we've done, and that's more my ego than anything, but we didn't buy an enzyme cleaner soon enough. Basically, when your puppy goes to the toilet inside the house, just wiping it with a regular disinfectant is not enough because there will be a lingering smell that we can't smell, but they can, which means it's more likely for them to go to the toilet again in that same exact spot. So then eventually we bought the, the cleaner and it did make a bit of a difference, but to be honest, also, it's not a lifesaver and you shouldn't rely on an enzyme cleaner to really you know, do the potty training for you. But yes, I would say probably decrease the probability of him going into the same spot again. So 
I would recommend it, but it's not your holy grail. It's not what's going to make the massive difference in your potty training journey. And the last mistake that I, we've done, which I actually feel the most guilty about out of everything that we've done with him so far, is that we actually misread the feeding guide on his kibble. So when we were reading the feeding guide, there's basically according to the adult weight of uh, your dog and their age, you should feed that many grams a day. However, I read it as their puppy weight. So basically for about a week, we've been feeding him as much kibble as you should give to a puppy of a breed that's about 10 kilos. So, you know, like a small, small poodle or something. And over time, he was getting really agitated and angry and like barking at us. And he would just not leave us alone when we were having food, constantly barking, constantly jumping up on the table. And I was like, what's wrong with him? What's happening? So eventually I was like, well, let me check the feeding guide. And it turns out we gave him basically kind of half the food we were supposed to. And I felt so terrible about it. Uh, honestly, the moment we started feeding him the right amount, he got so much calmer. He was being, you know, still a puppy, but he was being so nice. He was being trainable. He was being friendly. Everything we wanted him to be, and he wasn't at the beginning. So if there's one thing to note is triple check your feeding guide. Make sure you're giving them the right amount and weigh your dog's food. Just measuring it in cups is not the right way. Definitely weigh it out because pup puppies... They don't know when they're full. They don't know when they've had enough. So it's up to you to make sure that you're giving them the right amount. So these are some of the mistakes we've done and we've definitely learned a lot from them. I hope you do as well. Please do pop your mistakes and your learnings in the comments so we can all learn from each other because if there is one thing that we can all do is make sure that we share these learnings and all we can all become better puppy owners and better dog owners. Thank you so much for watching the video and we'll see you soon.